We're going to look at a CNN clip. This is an interview with Cori Bush and Jamal Bowman by CNN's John Berman. And this is probably one of the best interviews I think I've ever seen from leftist lawmakers. And that's not a hyperbole. Basically, what they do here is they thoroughly deconstruct the mainstream media's bias against leftist lawmakers. They kind of take that narrative that is usually pushed and they challenge it. Usually, if we see this dispute between leftist lawmakers, progressives, and centrist Democrats, then, I mean, nine times out of ten, it's the progressives who are framed to be the bad guys and the obstructionists, and they're the ones who are being unreasonable. And you kind of get that sense in this clip that John Berman is siding with Joe Manchin. Now, he may be playing devil's advocate, but either way, the narrative here that Joe Manchin is the reasonable one and leftist lawmakers are the ones who are being unreasonable, that is challenged and I think thoroughly dismantled here by Cori Bush and Jamal Bowman. And every single person needs to see this, uh, especially members of Congress, because if everyone got on the same page and said these things, I think that finally we'd be able to break through and people who tune into mainstream media wouldn't always have the same takeaway, that progressives bad, centrists and moderates reasonable. Uh, so take a look at this first clip here. You talk about the people in your districts and what they're asking for. How do you tell them that the possibility of nothing is better than the possibility of everything. But why is that the possibility? I'm sorry, Corey, no. go ahead. No, but that, but that's, but <laughs> well, that's- you vote against, If it's a $1.5 yeah. trillion dollar plan that gets to the floor, will you vote against it? But that's the expectation. The expectation is we will, we will give you crumbs and expect you to be happy. What we're saying is I didn't come to Congress to continue to give crumbs to my community. St. Louis continues to get crumbs and we keep being number one for homicide, number one or number two for homicides, number one for police murder, number one for the murder of children. We keep having those issues. We keep having issues with 10 uh, black children being t 10 times as likely to go to the hospital to an emergency room for asthma than white children. How do we fix those things? You have to put the money there. And so I didn't come to Congress to sit back and accept those crumbs. Give my folks the meal. And that is why we're here to push that. No, don't ask us why aren't we willing to compromise. Ask Joe Manchin. Yes. Is he OK with violence in our communities continuing, public housing falling apart? Black and brown people disproportionately dying from COVID, the climate crisis, ask him to go bigger instead of asking us to go smaller. To, to be clear, we're, at, we're asking every member, you know, where they're going to go and where the possible agreements can be reached. Paul Begala was on earlier today and talked about progress versus perfection. <laughs> Are, you know, it, well... Perfect. You, That's not even. But we're we're talking about a package that is not even perfection. Three point five even, trillion yeah, was the is, compromise. Right. That was the compromise. This is not President perfection. President Biden came in at six trillion. Again, yes. and I'm, I'm making yes. the argument that Joe Manchin no, is making yes. here because he's not sitting here, but he's he would say one point five trillion isn't crumbs. <laughs> we're paying for one point five first of all, so we have the offsets. This is key. Tell Joe it's, Manchin oh, to come yeah. to my district. That's right. Tell him to come to my district. Tell him to meet with me, and I'll take him to see. What happens when you give when you give a little of you give a little of something and you expect people to to live off of that? Because what will happen is that one point five trillion or or whatever it turns out to be that he wants. We can't expect anything. We can't expect other investments, other big investments to come right after that. It'll be, oh, we did something for you. Mm -hmm. We spend $7.6 trillion on the military alone mm -hmm. every 10 years. Yes. And it's okay for us to spend that money. No one bats an eye. But we're looking to spend three point five dollars over 10 years that most of it is paid for on a bottom-up economy to target those most vulnerable. And we have a problem with that. Black Brown, black and brown people, black and brown women, indigenous people, poor people, we always have to wait. You always ask, not you, the government, always ask us to kick the can down the road for, for the most vulnerable. And people, to me, that's unacceptable. So I don't say this very often, but I think that everything that they said was virtually perfect. I wouldn't change a single thing. In fact, I don't really have much commentary to supplement what they said. Uh, but I just want to highlight what they said because it's that good. So the one criticism that I could anticipate is that, well, you could say maybe they were being a little bit too harsh on John Berman. He's just playing devil's advocate. Not all CNN anchors are going to say the same thing. But I think that the questions that he asked were so silly, even if he's playing devil's advocate here, that 
it's it's worthwhile to laugh in his face at that question because that's how silly that narrative is. So, for example, he cites Paul Begala of all people. Who gives a fuck what Paul Begala thinks? But he says, you know, Paul Begala was on today and he talked about progress versus perfection. And Cory Bush just laughed at that. And the reason why that's so laughable, well, I mean, she laid it out. We're talking about a package that isn't even perfection. And Jamal Bowman brought up the point. We already compromised. So if you're talking about us as if we're the individuals who are not willing to compromise, we already did. We came down from $6 trillion to $3.5 trillion, and now we're being asked to come down again. So you're pretending as if this is a perfect package when it's not, and we're not getting everything that we want. But at what point do we draw the line and say, you've watered this down enough, and now it's to the point where it's it's just it's not worth voting for, especially considering all of the harmful things that's in the bipartisan infrastructure proposal, corporate giveaways. So it's really important that they fundamentally dismantle this talking point. Oh, well, don't let progress be the enemy of, or the perfect be the enemy of the good, is the usual saying. If we keep doing more incrementalism and more incrementalism and we don't actually go big, it's not going to be enough. We've been doing neoliberal, centrist, incrementalist policies for decades now, and what has it gotten us? It's not going to save the planet. It's not going to fix the economy. It's not going to help the working class. It's just more of the same. It's crumbs, as Cory Bush laid out. And, um, you know, he he made the point, John Berman made the point, that uh, Manchin wouldn't say that $1.5 trillion is crumbs, except it is crumbs compared to all the other things that we spend money on. I mean, Jamal Bowman made the excellent point that we spend uh, $7.6 trillion on the military alone every 10 years, and nobody bats an eye. It's fine. But when it comes to helping people, that's where we're really having serious conversations about fiscal responsibility and the deficit. And it's a double standard. It shows you that the priorities of the media to even think about it in this way, they're flawed. They're biased in favor of the establishment and centrists. And what they do here is they try to change that entire narrative, flip it on its head. No, we're not the obstructionists. It's Joe Manchin. And they said that very clearly. And Cory Bush made a point about how, you know, if we accept crumbs, if we accept this watered down bill, then all the issues that are unaddressed, there's this expectation that, well, we already did all of this, so we can't do more in the future. So it's kind of like you have this one opportunity and this is it. So you have to go as big as possible because who knows when Democrats are going to hold control of all of Congress next. And also, you know, when it comes to compromise, Jamal Bowman made the great point that, you know, don't ask us why we're not willing to compromise because it's Joe Manchin who's not willing to compromise. It's Joe Manchin and Kirsten Sinema who half the time refused to negotiate. I mean, when there were do there were negotiations for the Build Back Better Act, Kirsten Sinema left and she literally went to a private donor retreat. They're the ones, Jamal Bowman, Cory Bush, progressives, they're the ones who are doing the work. They're the ones who are trying to hash out a deal. It's the centrists, the uh, so-called centrists, I should say, the right-wing Democrats who are refusing to even be reasonable here. So Cory Bush was asked, or they were both asked, and Cory Bush responded to this question of, okay, so if it's $2 trillion, what do you do? Do you, do you vote against it? Are you really going to go back to your constituents with nothing because you have you know a bunch of these proposals cut? And her answer was perfect. And on top of that, uh, Jamal Bowman ended with a really important note. Again, the prospect of getting nothing. If it's an issue of what you think should happen versus what can happen, you you would vote no on two trillion dollars. So what? Because what we've been saying is, if we if we don't want any programs cut, period. No programs cut. No cuts it, on no anything cuts, of the three point five trillion. No cuts of programs, but we are willing to say if we have to cut years on some of the programs to make this work, then okay, there may be some areas that can instead of being a ten year investment can be five years well, or can be years. seven years or eight years. So we're willing to do that, but don't cut our programs. How do? How do you tell um, that person working in the child care center that, you know, that, no, we, you know, not you, you wait, you wait till whenever, because we don't even know when this will come back around. But we want to make sure that the money is there to be able to um, pay for the folks that are, you know, fixing our roads and bridges. Do we need that? Absolutely. And I want to make sure that they know that, that we want that investment for them. But we also need our investment and in, our investments in housing. We also need investments in our schools. We also need those investments um, in that climate action. We need that clean, um, clean electricity. And the majority 
majority of the American people are with us. The majority of Democrats are with us. There are just a few who are holding it up, and it's not us. The majority of the American people are living paycheck to paycheck. The child tax credit, the temporary one, lifted 50% of children out of poverty. We're looking to extend that to make it permanent. More money in people's pockets, more spending, better economy, more jobs. So great. Such great points there. Yes, the American people are with them. So it shouldn't be that progressives are brought on these shows and it's implied that they're the ones who are being unreasonable. They're the ones who are willing to uh, or refusing rather to compromise because they've already compromised. And whenever they do compromise, it's never enough. Well, OK, you, you go down to two trillion. Why won't you go down to one point five trillion? Why won't you go down to one trillion? And that's that's so unacceptable. What every single mainstream news host should be doing is bringing on Joe Manchin and Kirsten Cinema, and confronting them. Why are you not delivering for the American people? These policies are overwhelmingly popular. Why are you not delivering on the agenda that the president of the United States wants? There are two senators who are standing in the way of this entire agenda. Why do you get to be roadblocks for something that your entire party wants. 98% of elected Democrats want this passed, but yet because of Kirsten Sinema and Joe Manchin, it's not being through. So to suggest that it's the progressives who are the ones who are holding up talks here and being obstructionist, it's absurd. And that's why it's really important that Cori Bush and Jamal Bowman have the opportunity to go on these programs and make their case. Now, another thing that's important to note is that these are not good faith negotiations. Progressives like Jamal Bowman and Cori Bush, they're negotiating in good faith. But Joe Manchin is not. When they even choose to negotiate, they don't care about their constituents. They're operating at the behest of their donors and what their donors want. And uh, Jamal Bowman hinted at this. Joe Manchin and others like him have a certain perspective that I think is incorrect. He thinks investing in a bottom-up economy is entitlement. He claims he's worried about inflation. But I think we need to have a conversation about the special interests that support Joe Manchin and many others. Yes. And we need to understand that when we invest this way, it's better for the GDP and the economy going forward, but it's also better than for our well-being. When you put money in people's pockets, they spend that money. It creates demand, which creates supply, which creates jobs. We have to make sure we're putting money in people's pockets and lifting them out of a global pandemic. Look at what we've gone through over the last 18 months. And again, he's right. So you have someone like Joe Manchin who doesn't actually care about the specifics. He doesn't care about fiscal responsibility. This is someone who's just doing the bidding of his donors. And guess what? His worldview, his pro-austerity worldview has been debunked again and again and again. We're dealing with a global pandemic. If we're not choosing to invest in Americans now, when will we ever? If we can't do it now, will there ever be a time? So this interview was absolutely just perfect. Cori Bush and Jamal Bowman, uh, I take it they won't be invited back on mainstream media if these are the points that they make, just totally taking that narrative and crushing it and flipping it and actually shedding light on the situation for CNN's viewers who might think that it's the progressives who are the obstructionists. This was just great. In this instance, it is not progressives who are being obstructionist or unreasonable. It's the conservative Democrats. And I hate to break it to you all, but they always have been the obstructionists.